Good morning, St. Pete. Good morning. It's great to see you all here on the last day of 2023. All right, so on the back of your bulletin, there's a couple announcements. The one about the Christmas card exchange box, we know where it is located by now. Today is the last day to actually grab your cards or give your cards and grab your cards. So uh, if you haven't messed with it yet, it's located out here on the uh, table next to the sanctuary doors. So make sure you stop by today and get your cards if you have any left there. Um, today, of course, the worship was moved to 10. You all are here, so I don't know if that means you were here early. Some of you might have been here for an hour, but um, you're here. January 1st, tomorrow the office is going to be closed for New Year's Day. January 3rd and 10th, there will be no Bible study, but Fuel will resume this Wednesday. Um, there's still upper room devotionals. You can pick up a copy at either sanctuary entrance to guide in your daily devotional. And as always, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew so we know that you were here to worship with us today. Good morning. One more note is that we have our January newsletters available. If you don't receive those by email, they are in the back of the sanctuary. And a very happy new year to you all. It is hard to believe that we are already to 2024, but it is a joy to be with you all in worship on this last day of the year. Whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you're strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love. We speak of joy. We speak of handing light in the fire We speak of dreams being fulfilled. We speak of a glorious and an angel forces. We speak the words, do not be afraid. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak, for the world needs a light. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us worship and listen. Let us speak. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 251, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And then we will sing number 249, There's a Song in the Air.
Please remain standing as we affirm our faith. The affirmation of faith can be found on your insert and on the slides. We believe in telling the story, the story of a loving and merciful God who will not let God's people go, the story of a baby who grew up and changed the world, the story of our faith. We believe in speaking up for our neighbors, for the oppressed, for the overlooked and marginalized. We believe in speaking out against violence, greed, abuse, fear, scarcity mindset, and bigotry. We believe in passing the mic so that we are not the only ones speaking, so that we can lift up the voices of those around us, so that we too might listen and learn. We believe in the good news of the gospel, we believe that this good news is not to be kept to ourselves. We believe that those who dream cannot keep silent. Speak to us, holy God. Speak through us, holy God. May it be so. Amen. divine voice. In the beginning, it was you who spoke over the water and brought forth creation. And then it was you who asked, Cain, where is your brother? It was you who spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. And it was you, through angels, who spoke to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. You have always been speaking in words, in memories, in songs, and in dreams. So today, as we prepare to hear your word read aloud, we ask that you would speak to us once again, as only you can, so that we might speak this same good news to others. We are listening. We are grateful. Amen. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading can be found in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 10, through Isaiah 62, verse 3. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name, that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 238, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Our New Testament reading can be found in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And I invite you to join us in singing hymn number 239, Silent Night.
You might have noticed that our order of worship is just a little bit different this morning. Because in just a minute, I'm going to invite the ushers forward for this morning's offering. You also might have noticed that there is a card table with gold stars on it. We are going to be selecting star words this morning, a little bit later on in our service, which will include a liturgy and the prayers of the people and an invitation to come forward and select a star. I also can't help but chuckle a little bit that we heard the story of Simeon and Anna and how they exalted and exclaimed the good news that Christ was among them. And then we sang Silent Night. Mm -hmm. Whereas that is quite the opposite of what we know to be, that we are called to do, which is to go and tell it on the mountain. And so I recognize that worship might be a little bit different this morning. And I invite you to embrace that. That maybe you feel a little bit of discomfort. That I am not going to preach a sermon today. And that the offering might be in a different place. And that things might feel different. It's okay. It's okay to be a little bit uncomfortable in church. It's okay to experience new things as we enter this new year. And so at this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, pour your spirit upon these, our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May they be used to proclaim your good news throughout the earth. Bless these gifts and those who give them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
be seated. This morning we have a few uh, concerns that we to lift up. Our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We want to lift up Doyle Clark, who is at Vanderbilt, after having surgery to remove an abscess that also was gangrene. Um, and so he is going to be in the hospital until about Tuesday. So we want to keep Doyle and his family in our prayers. We also want to continue to keep Dorothy Burney in our prayers as she continues to recover from her stroke a few weeks ago, a recovery that is going much slower than would be preferred. Are there other joys or concerns this morning? This morning, our prayer time is going to be a little bit different. It's a prayer practice in churches all over the world to give people a star word as the new year comes. There are many reasons behind this tradition. First, we know that the Magi follow a star, which ultimately led them to Jesus. Therefore, we too use all the resources we have available to us, including creative prayer practices and intention for the new year to move closer to Christ. Secondly, we trust that God uses multiple ways to guide us and speak to us. Star words are one such lens that might provide us with a way to look for God in our midst, both actively and in hindsight. Finally, we know that the most common prayer practice for many involves speaking to God as opposed to silence or contemplation. However, this prayer practice invites a new prayer rhythm of reflection and review that can provide a new way to connect with God. So in just a few moments, you'll be invited to draw a star word. However, as we prepare our hearts and minds for this centering moment, let us pray. God of starlight, there has always been something holy about stars for us. We wish on them. We look for them. We celebrate when we see them streaking across the sky on summer nights. We map out their designs and consider glimpses of the Milky Way holy enough for bare feet. There has always been something holy about stars. We know that. You know that. The Magi must have known that. So today, we come to you in prayer, trusting that if you can paint the stars in the sky, then surely you can hear us over the noise. So first, we pray for people wishing on stars. We pray for those who lost loved ones in 2023. We pray for those who lost a job, a home, or a sense of home. We pray for children who had to grow up faster than any child ever should. We pray for those who are entering a new stage of life. And at the same time, we also say a prayer of gratitude for all the stars you have left us for this last year. The signs and mile markers of hope on the horizon. And so we give you thanks. We give you thanks for birthday parties and potlucks for grocery store clerks and teachers and mechanics and doctors and air conditioning repairers, for the moments where we found stillness and quiet, for the energy and exuberance of cousins playing together, 
for those who continue to demand justice and refuse to give up on a broken system. So today, in this new year, we ask that once more you would give us a sign. Pour out a double portion of your Holy Spirit on these words, so that these ordinary slips of paper might provide us a glimpse of something more. For like the Magi, we are seeking you. Like the Magi, we are looking up. Like the Magi, we need a sign. Guide our feet. Show up in the mundane and the extraordinary. Be in the stars in the sky and in our everyday lives. Hear our prayers. We are hopeful, O oh God. We are hopeful. And so with the confidence of children wishing on stars, we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Having prayed together, it is now time for us to come and receive our star word for the upcoming year. You are invited to come forward as you feel led to select a word from the table. You're invited to kneel at the altar rail and reflect on that word if you so choose. If you would like for me to come and pray with you, I am available to do that. If you need us to bring you a word to your seat, please just lift your hand and we will bring you a word. Friends, you are now invited.
Friends, we have been seeking, but God is here. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of ink black skies and starry nights, like the Magi so many years ago, we are here seeking you. Step by step, we have wandered into this space with the hope of feeling you in our midst. And step by step, you have loved us, claimed us, and fed us. Today, we have drawn star words. For some of us, these words are full of meaning, challenge, and invitation already. For others, these words are a blank canvas, inviting you into our lives. So as the new year dawns, we pray that you would be in our dreams and in our waking. Allow us to use these star words as a tool to see you in our everyday life. May they guide us. As the star guided the Magi, may they illuminate your path as the light always does. And in a year, may we find ourselves here together again, with a mouth full of praise for the ways in which you have been pre present with us. With hearts full to the brim, together we pray. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we come to the close of our service as we sing together both Good Christian Friends Rejoice, hymn number 224, and also Joy to the World, hymn number 246.
important reminder is that we are still in the Christmas season for another week. We are still invited to sing the Christmas carols, to rejoice in the birth of our Savior, and to not keep silent about it. And so may we go from this place with the peace of Christ, shouting the good news from the mountaintops. Amen. Amen. Thank you.